recording the 20 whatever it is 20 26 <laughs> watch me work we're back we were away now we're back um and um uh, it's exciting because this is where we talk about you and your creative process and um what we're going to do is we what we've been doing for the last however many years like 14 years 15 years something like that we uh work together and then we talk about your work or it, it, I take questions from you about your creative process. And we are going to work together for 20 minutes. And should you after at the, when the timer sounds and it's question time, should you have any questions? Lolly will tell you how to get in touch. Yeah. So if you're here with us on Zoom, you can ask questions by clicking the raise your hand button, which should be in the reactions tab likely on the bottom of your screen, but if you have any trouble finding it, you can just message me in the chat and I'll help you out. If you're watching the live stream with us on HowlRound, feel free to send your questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram accounts, or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Fantastic. Okay. It's the 26th of June, and we have 20 minutes. We're going to work together for 20 minutes. Here we go.
that is time. Oh, you're muted, SLP. I know, I'm just pushing the wrong button. Yay. <laughs> All right. So uh, now comes the dialogue part of the show. We did the action, now we're doing the dialogue. Any questions? Any answers? Looks like we have Lou, and then we'll do Kimmy. Hey, okay. Lou. Hey, it's good to see you. Um, my question is, I was just doing the session, and I was totally vibing on the session, and I felt like I was plugged into some other place. <laughs> it was a flow. It felt so good. Uh oh And right when it was over, I was like, man. I wish I could always do that. And I guess my question is, can I always do that? And why is it so hard most of the time? And what is it that happens when it just eases up? And you talk sometimes, you know, about mm -hmm. yoga and breathing and I just, my question today is like, how do I just get there? I think because it's rainy, because I've been relaxing today. Mm -hmm. I didn't myself too hard today you know it's my birthday this week I'm turning 50 on Thursday happy birthday what what is that date I don't have my calendar with me June 29th 29th congratulations yay yay I'm, I think I'm feeling a little just like mm -hmm. and you know but I'm working on a book project and I want to write all the time and sometimes it just feels like I'm banging my head on the wall you know I've been I've mm -hmm. talked about that with you and but today just felt smooth I don't know how do I find that how do I just find that mm -hmm. yeah that's a that's a great question I I mean I'm just going back so you know like can you do it all the time um yeah can you know that you're doing it all the time maybe not you know yeah like, are you breathing all the time? Yeah. Do you know that you're breathing all the time? Nah. Right. So, so maybe the trick, maybe not the trick, but maybe one of the answers is take what comes, you know, like some days it's there. Some days the flow feels like a flow and some days the flow doesn't feel like a flow, but it's still the flow. Mm. The flow might not always feel flowy. Okay. Like they say in Gypsy, you know, the musical, got to take the rough with, with the smooth or whatever. I think that's from Gypsy. If it's mm. not, I don't know, it's from somewhere. Got to take the rough with the smooth, you know, and, and it's like, but what you can do, I think every day, which you probably do already, Lou, is you show up at your work, your writing station, right? And you you do the, the, the thing. And that's, that's, that's what it is. And some days it feels... Some days it's rainy and you like the rain and some days it's sunny and you don't like the sun or some days it's rainy and you don't like the rain and. Yeah, yeah. and maybe I wouldn't maybe I wouldn't have flowed today if I didn't. Find it stickier three days like we don't know right it feels I right know. it feels like the flow is where I want it like i'm like this is where I want to be you know but. Right. To your point, if I wasn't working all the time in some form or fashion, maybe I guess we just don't know. We just have to show up, right? That's I, I think the trick, yeah. The, and the tricky thing is when we think this is when it's right. Because mm. then you're going like, so I don't like it when it's hard. I like it when I'm on easy street. I only want to be on easy street. And that's a little, I mean, in my experience, and um, you know, I I really work to take it as it comes that doesn't mean that I don't like pull my hair out and go what you know like that but just to realize that you know I mean really not all plays get written in three days mm. yeah they don't and that's really fun to remember 
they don't, you know. Um, some take years, you know, um, and that's, but they're no less like right or good or whatever. They're, they're all good. Yeah. I'm really, you know, the culture of production and capitalism is in, is in me deep. Yeah. Yeah. Of, you know. yeah. Yeah, it is. It's tricky. It's tricky. And the, also the culture of comparing, you know, I mean, I don't know if you go on social media and someone goes, look at me, I'm on a beach with a glass of wine or whatever, a chocolate, because I just finished my novel in seven days and blah, blah, blah. And look, my, the, my hair looks really good too, you know, and that's really difficult to, uh, to deal with. Mm. So I suggest you don't look at those people. Yeah. I look at them a lot less. I'm getting yeah. better, better about it. Way good. better. Yeah. yeah. They don't help you, do they? No, and they don't care about me either. <laughs> they don't care about you. They don't help you. And they're they're probably if they have to, you know, if you have to do a lot of that self-promotion kind of stuff, I mean, you're probably not as happy as you're putting out there that you are. Yeah. You're getting a lot of that too. You're getting you're getting this disconnect between what they portray. Look at me, here I am again doing something wonderful. And what you you're vibing, this person is not happy, and there's a disconnect, and yet you have to buy what they're offering you because you don't have any evidence to the contrary. But yet and still, it causes this great disconnect. Yeah, yeah. my manuscript has the new title on it is I don't I don't buy what I'm selling. So it's oh, funny you use that expression. That's interesting. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. <laughs> yeah we'll see where that goes but yeah I like the yeah. title thanks yeah because I used to work in advertising right, right so there's right. A, lot of, um, a lot of dissent but but yeah I think it's just more of the same right just pen to paper eyes on your own paper and just trust the process I mean I think that's where I am today but it was fun today I guess so thank you for the space because yeah. I was like it was fun yeah it's fun it, it can be fun it can be difficult. Yeah, I still don't. I still haven't stopped, though. Right. Well, that's that's and that's that's the great thing, right? Yeah, I'm pr pretty proud of that. Actually. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, we should all when we say every day, we say I showed up. I did yeah. a little. You know, I personally took, <laughs> took away. Yeah, right. It's good. Um, or adding to. You know, right. whichever, whichever way you're going, it's both. Yeah, yeah. I showed up. I made an effort. No effort is ever wasted, says the Bhagavad Gita somewhere in there. No effort is ever wasted. Thank you so much. It's so great to see you. Likewise. All right. Thank you. I'll take all that in. Thanks, Lou. No, we all will. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Uh, Kimmy D, you're next. And then we'll have Dr. J after you. Hey, Kimmy, how you doing, girl? Uh oh. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm hanging in. It's nice to see you. It's a uh, sorry, I cried all over you when I met you. <laughs> it was great to meet you in person or see you in person yeah, again. It's so nice to see your show. And I was crying when you won. I was so excited. And my husband and I, he's like, I know, it's, it's SLP. You know, so, so, so. Thank it's you. just wonderful to have you in my life on any level and um and my my cohorts that show up um so w as you know i've been through hell the last several months and um at 61 i made an executive decision to go to grad school for playwriting for dramatic writing wow and congratulations thank you and uh and I was thinking um, mostly NYU because that's always been my heart, you know, to just to get into NYU if, if that's possible. And because I've been looking at the program and they have a, you know, a stand up comedian specifically on faculty and they have a little I, I actually had a meeting. I was standing downstairs and I said, I, I'm here. Can I get in? And they they just I sat down and had a, a little chat with the uh academic advisor so it was really it was great and I I don't have a vision board but I went and bought myself an NYU sweatshirt <laughs> oh that's great that's great 
Um, and so I guess I'm getting nervous about um, the application, like this, you know, writing about yourself. And um, that's never been my, I can write about myself in the abstract, like in the play um, that I wrote, but I can't seem to find comfort in writing about myself in the personal statement. That's kind of a, a stickler. And, and at 61, you have a lot of stuff to jam in a resume. So I, I, obviously I can't put, I don't want to put 75 pages. I just want to put one page and, <laughs> and, and I don't have that much, that much um, experience in theater, but that's, it's really what I want to do. I want to be in the theater. I just, I saw like 10 plays when I was in the city. I was on the rush line every day. Um, so I saw several plays when I was there. Uh, I was leaving the Jersey Shore, coming to the city to relax. That shows you how much stress. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you can guide me in any way, I would be so grateful. With a with your application, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think you should just write it and put yourself out there. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm not part part of the application process over there, but um, you know, all we get all kinds of students from all over the world and all levels you, of. Do you teach there? I do. I do. Oh I my do. god! I'm so excited. Okay. 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 Oh. But, uh, so I think you just need to fill out the paperwork. I mean, I, I didn't go to grad school. I didn't ever apply to grad school, so I don't know. But I think if you just, you got a deadline probably, right? And yes. just, just, you know, tell tell them who you are and why you want to be there, I guess. I, I mean, I, I don't. I know it's a weird thing. I just, at 61, I have tried everything I know to get my work in front of somebody and that hasn't worked. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay. And I know what I need for sure is structure. I have no problem with dialogue and imagining and everything else, but I want to put my art within the framework of uh, the discipline in which my work will be recognized and taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that, that structure. I don't have, and I know that it's different. I mean, I've read, you, I've read Neil Simon, I've read um, Stoppard, I've, I've read all these wonderful people and it's different in every place. So I know as much as there's structure, there's also breaking the boundaries of that as well. Um, but I think you have to know the rules to break them, right? So that's the only way that and career development and being put in front of people, I, I, I see no other way as to how to get my work out there. So I, and I just thought that I would be very inspired being in New York and surrounded by cohorts. It's, it's a good, it's a, it's a decent program. Um, you know, uh, people come in there needing a lot of different things, wanting to get in the TV stuff and, and all that. So it, it, um, it is, it's a joyful program and it's also can, not fulfill everybody's desires so as much as you know what you want and what you're looking for and then you know make sure that they can help you get what you need um because uh I, I right now anyway it does not have a a big uh getting your work in front of people kind of thing we, they don't produce a lot of uh, student plays you right know. right so I know just, Columbia I, does that. sorry mm -hmm. sorry yeah columbia or I think Yale, you know, so other programs, you know, the new school, Hunter. But anyway, but, but, but write your, you know, do your application and good luck. That's Thank great. You. That's great. Hope to see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kimmy. Uh, next, we have Dr. J. Dr. J. It is so wonderful to be here. I, um, I belong below. I belong to probably about six or seven different writing groups. Oh, right. And my thing, I've been writing since I was about three or four years old, really, literally. Okay. Um, I'm from Detroit originally. I write a lot about Detroit and my experiences there. 
I'll write a lot about my experiences in Cambridge, Massachusetts, living in between Harvard University and MIT, mm -hmm. which um, sometimes makes me want to uh, upchuck. But at any rate, I'm working on a play that deals with the homeless people in Cambridge and how Harvard and MIT and the, their students and all of the biotech people around, because you know, this is the biotech mm -hmm. place. I'm telling you, talk about billionaires. I mean, we have oh. it all around. So my, my, my point is, and what I wanted to share with everyone is that I always glean so much from listening to writers talk about their process. Mm -hmm. And for me, as, as a poet, my process is always spiritual. Mm. And it is always, you know, writing, uh, using a pencil and a pad. Mm -hmm. My process for other types of writing, uh, journalism, um, you know, gathering information, uh, playwriting, you know, visualizing myself mm -hmm. as a character in the play and writing from there. But I'm just interested always in listening to writers and listening to their process. I find it very, very empowering for me. I also like it because I find that it's so often non-competitive. Mm -hmm. And I'm involved in a lot of different programs here in Boston at Emerson College, mm -hmm. where I was in a MF program, MFA program some years ago and had to drop out because my sister was murdered. And I just couldn't, um, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I just, I just left. I understand as a college professor, especially working in an urban environment, why a lot of my students just up and leave and mm -hmm. you don't hear from them. I know what that feels like because I know what it felt like for me after all those years, with all of those years when my sister was murdered. And I remember what it felt like for me, which also I'm gonna weave into some of my writing when I was in a graduate program, a PhD program at Harvard, and I lost my mother unexpectedly. I asked for a leave of absence and they wouldn't grant it to me because they really didn't want me in the program. Oh, yeah. So they told me, you have to, you have to finish your, this was in July, they told me in October, you will be taking your qualifying exams for the PhD, no, mm -hmm. no exceptions. And I know the, they wanted me to fail. And it must've been my mother's spirit that was on my shoulders because when it came around and I took the exam, and I passed it, it was like, you know how people give you an applause or uh, some kudos, but you can tell that they're disingenuous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only did this because I had to, not because I want to. Mm -hmm. So I just say all that to say, I'm really interested and I'm happy to be here. And I'm really interested to hear what everyone has to say. You have very, very interesting faces. And I want to hear the stories that go along with those spaces. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. J, and welcome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Up next, we have Drake. Hey, Drake. Where is Drake? There you are. Hi, hey there. Going? It's going all right. Good. Um, yeah, um, I have been uh, kicking around um, an idea for a play that I've been um, slowly writing over the past few months, mm -hmm. uh, a few months. But um, I've, um, they, I guess I should like provide a little bit of them. It's um, it, I think it comes a lot from um, like a lot of recent uh, discoveries, uh, and especially like a, a personal um discovery and kind of um like dealing with specific like deep rooted traumas um mm -hmm. and kind of bringing that up and and um using that to kind of go into um like writing this this thing um and I'm really excited about it um and I've been writing and writing writing and um I know that like I mean everyone's process is different um and it's been a very non-linear process uh it's not like a it's, it hasn't been a start to finish kind of thing it's been very scattered around all over the place um and i guess um 
my uh, a question um, because I know like I have to be um, patient and it's something that I kind of have to find and I can't uh, really like make it happen. It just kind of has to happen as I keep moving further in the process. Um, and I guess my question is how how does one keep writing and progressing in a project without it feeling forced? Because like, I, I can't just like put it away. Like I definitely want to keep going. I just, um, yeah, I'm having trouble lately, like continuously working on it without it feeling like I'm working on this because I have to keep going and it has to be done rather than, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does that make any yeah. sense? Well, it sounds like, I mean, after the initial, maybe the beginning part of it, where it felt like good and yay, I want to do this, you've hit a sort of patch in the road where it's like Lou would say, the flow isn't as flowy, you know? And and um, there, what's important, Drake, is that do, do you have a, a set time for your writing every day? Um give or take yes like not like penciled out but usually at the same time at the same duration every day yes right okay great so um great that's a really important to keep that's like a date with your writing self right you, you can't stand up you can't stand that person up that, that entity right um also you can shorten the time do you uh do, what do you work with some kind of timer or a stopwatch or a timer on your phone or no, I don't. Same duration. How do you know the same duration? Because you can kind of feel it. Um, so by pages, what do you do? It's kind of like a like a self check process. Like I, I I kind of write and write and write and and knock around ideas and throw things at walls until they stick. Until I kind of like until the ideas and kind of what I'm adding is not productive anymore. In the sense of like this. Uh, right. maybe, maybe I've been writing for two and a half to three hours and I write something absolutely insane. And that's when I kind of know it's like, okay, maybe it's time to take a little break. Right. So great. Great. So what if you, I mean, the thing is it's all over the place. You're not sure. One thing that we, that I tend to do uh, when things are kind of all over the place is I start to create some structures, which help just focus. It's just focus. And also it's like if you know um, that you're doing four laps around the track, you know, or you know that you're only writing for, say, 20 minutes or only writing for one hour, then you can just focus. And so I'm suggesting maybe instead of two or three hours, kind of sort of every day, you do an hour a day. You set your timer, preferably not your phone, preferably something not like this, but, you know, a, an egg timer that just does this. And you set your timer and you sit there and you work an hour every day and then you go and do whatever you want, you know, something else, something more fun. Right. And then you just keep at it. And some days it's going to be flowy and wonderful. And some days it's going to be not so great. And maybe, or maybe not, maybe it'll just all be wonderful, hopefully. Um, and when it gets a little sticky and a little difficult, maybe cut down the time a little bit. It's like, if you're going for a run, right, you're training for a marathon. You go out, you run a mile, great. You run three miles the next day, great. Then, yeah, you kind of feel a little tired. You just go run a mile, okay? And you just stick with it. And sometimes it will feel forced. That doesn't mean it's wrong. We have these ideas of what the artistic process should look like, feel like, you know, sound like, you know what I mean? And we have those ideas in our head or they're given to us by media or Instagram or a combination of all these things. And we think if we're not doing it that way, then it must be wrong. And uh, yeah, not helpful. Okay. Cause sometimes it feels, sometimes it, it feels forced. Yeah. I mean, like you're with someone you love. Sometimes you don't have anything to say. Eh, the conversation feels for eh, it's, it's what it's marriage day, 190,000 million. You know, it's okay. And you just show up the next day. And like Lou was saying, the rough, maybe the rough stuff, you got to go over a little bit of rough stuff to get to a, a, a smooth place, a place for, with a, a more flowy flow, you know? Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. That helps a lot. Thank you so much. You can also give yourself a little deadline, like by, I don't know, name a date, what, September the 1st or something. I'm going to have a draft. You know, just set set structures around it so that you can sense I'm going to be working on this till whatever, September the 1st or August the 1st or August the 15th or whatever. You know, because the marathon, you know how long it is. You don't like just go out there and run. <laughs> Even an ultra marathon, they're like, they don't like, just go out there and run. They're like, you're going to run this far, you know, and, and then you're going to be done. Uh, so give yourself a, a, a little, some, some structure that could help. Especially when you're dealing with, as you said, some traumatic things, you know. Structure helps when you're dealing with traumatic things and personal things that are traumatic. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And this is one of your structural pieces. So this watch me work, come to watch me work. And even if you don't say anything, and if you don't want to turn on your camera, you just sit here. This is one of your structural elements, you know, that keeps you kind of in the zone of getting your writing done. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's all I had. Cool. cool. Thank you, Drake. Good questions. Thank you, Drake. Uh, and next we have Ajara or Ahara. Yeah, it's anything is fine. It's Adra actually, but Adra. I'm called for it. Yeah, hello. I'm called a variety of stuff. Oh, <laughs> Adra it works everything. But yeah, um, thank you so much, Ms. Lori Parks. Thank you so much. Um, I, you're when you said last, I'm it just resonating because I was like, oh my gosh, like my question actually in regards. Let me see my question and then preface it. Um, but my question is like any advice for playwrights who are not pursuing a graduate program in your journey with that. And also thank you for what you said about the flow and the flow in it. Cause I get worried because I, I majored in, well, I do a lot of things. So let me not lie. I majored in theater. <laughs> I majored in theater. Oh, but I was doing acting and then I did a creative writing thing, but I'm also an African studies scholar and researcher. So I'm doing a PhD in African culture studies right now. So there's a lot of difference. So I'm trying to like, I don't know, you know how you marry the things together, but don't marry together, whatever they say it in the English. Oh. So <laughs> any advice <laughs> for a playwright who's not pursuing, like, you know, who's not pursuing a graduate degree? Because I, I worry about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing graduate degree in playwriting. I should, I shouldn't. But I'm like, you know, what I want to write about is what I'm doing now, essentially, in ways. So any advice, any advice, please? Uh, yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, I didn't go to grad school like 100 years ago. So that was back in the day when a lot of people were going to grad school. And I was like, why? Like that. I was like, why? So, you know, um, but uh, now it seems like it's a real sort of way to uh, to teach, which which is a, a wonderful option. And you someone was telling me the other day, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but that you need a graduate degree to if you to teach in academia, you know, in co college, um, which I didn't know because I've been teaching a long time with no degree. But, um, and the second thing, it's the, the, the career path is kind of discussed, outlined and, and sort of featured, a feature, like how to do that, how to uh, liaison, how to get to know people who run theaters, how to get to know people who uh, are putting together writer's rooms and for TV shows or things like that. So that's a great thing. And also, as Kimmy was talking about a little early, the cohort, the sort of a group of people who um, are also writers and you can support each other, cheer each other on, things like that. So those are good reasons. Um, and it depends what kind of writer you are, you know? And yeah, um, uh, yeah cause, cause, in, in my experience watching my students, which I, I, I provide them a special thing, which they don't really get in grad school too much, but I sort of give them the artistic context because so much of playwriting I learned by just being out there, St. Mark's Poetry Project, like on the corner, you know, doing Poets Theater, downtown, off, 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 off Broadway. Um, and now more young writers I meet 
like they want to go to Broadway. Maybe my first play will go to Broadway. You know, I'm like, wow, that's not, you know, but, but that's a, that's a thing they want. So it depends what you want. Like when it comes to like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when it comes to like um, Broadway, I would love that. That would be great. But for me, my kind of writing, I'm like, I want like something you did, like, I always watch your million one um, suggestions talk and something that you did that really inspired me is 365 plays, 365 days. And I want to do something within that realm, but in regards to Africa and like traveling around, like half theater on the streets, half theater in buildings, different things like that. So I think Broadway is great, but my when I think about theater and plays, I don't, for me, New York, I mean, cause I've studied in Berlin, I've studied in London, I've worked at Barrington Stage Company. So my, my idea of theater, I'm like, I think New York is okay, but I'm like, if I don't do theater in New York, I'll be fine as long as I get my work out there. If it goes to New York, that'll be great. But I want to be able to get it out to as many different places, different venues. But New York for me is not the goal to get my work out and write about what I care about and as many different places, whatever vibes at the time as well, but also places that will work for me and to commune with others is what that's my kind of writer type thing of them. No, that that's great. So all the more reason to, you know, to do that then, you know, to, I mean, to, to, to obviously everybody on this Zoom knows to be a writer, to be a creative person, there's one thing you got to do. You got to create. You can't, and not to say that you are, you know, but we, we can't sit around and talk about creating. That's what people do at cocktail parties that you you talk to. They go, oh, I have a play in me. I always wanted to write a novel. I've got the talent. You know, you go, great, then write it, go write it. You know, so you got to go and you got to write, write, write all your stuff. And you got to go out to those venues that you're interested in and create that kind of theater. You know, and, and the graduate degree is like, yeah, you're not getting a PhD in physics right now either. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if a graduate degree would actually help you achieve those goals you know so go and do that and then you can always circle back and get a graduate degree like a cherry on top kind of thing you can always do that spend a couple of years doing theater the way making theater the way you want to and then you can come back and, and do graduate school graduate school will be here <laughs> you know there are so many programs to go to and so many wonderful people at them and so many wonderful groups for you to be a part of just we just got to show up and do our writing every day that's the most important thing i will try even when it's not fluent because sometimes it's just not fluent <laughs> show up anyway show up anyway yeah. then you're a pro i'm telling you that's what the pros do we show up all we just keep showing up Thank you. <laughs> um, we have about five minutes left if anyone has one last question. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Hi. Hey, hey, SLP. Hi, everyone. I, uh, I've been in meetings all day. I'm, I came in late. I'm sorry. I, okay. I missed the earlier parts. Just wanted to check in and, and say, you know, I'm, uh, I've been trying to submit some things and at the same time, prepare them for my own medium and good, Zoom good sub stack and um, yeah, and it's um, the the next the next thing I'm I'm working on. I realized I, you know, I haven't. I had a, a writing group during the pandemic that I participated in, and they've all sort of drifted off. We had this Zoom, and that's still set up twice a week. And I, you know, I go on about once a week, my regular day, and there's never anyone there. So, <laughs> so, you know, just. Um, and I, you know, I remember so when I actually when I did my MFA that it was like, well, you've just joined the most expensive writing group, you know, in the world, <laughs> um, and that's and and that's it was great, and that's what it really was, um, in a lot of ways. 
Right. Uh, so, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out support and accountability uh, systems for uh-huh. myself because, you know, I work, I work not quite full time, but mm-hmm. because the work is stressful, um, there's, and kind of isolating, there's a whole, you know, piece of that I, I need to problem solve around how to, how to create the kind of community that, and obviously watch me work is excellent, but you know, in, in the old days, I was in a writing group with a playwright, a poet, a mystery writer. Um, and that was really, really great for me. I don't have to only, and I do not nonfiction. So it's not like I only need other nonfiction writers. So, so just trying to reflect on what's been helpful in the past and mm-hmm. what, um, what I think might be helpful now. So, mm-hmm. so that's, that's my check-in. So. That's good. I, I, I like that you're, you're continuing to sort of send your, develop your stuff for your medium and your future Substack, And um, cause you've been working on these beautiful projects for a while now. So yeah, it's good to hear that they're, they're ready to be sent out. You know, it's exciting. It's exciting. But um, I mean, also, so you, well, you can start a new writer's group. Would that be helpful? You know? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I plan to check in with, with the folks who, you know, I was writing with during the pandemic and, mm-hmm. and see who still wants to meet. Right. They're all, most of them are academics. And okay. so then, you know, things get complicated for, for them. Yeah. Um, but then sort of, you know, I, I, there's actually some resources. I don't like Facebook, but I, I'm back on a little bit because mm-hmm. there are some potential resources of finding other other people to write with there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I, you know, I here in here, I live in New York now. I don't have as many contacts with other writers as I did mm-hmm. when I lived in Boston. So, um, so that's also. So some of it is is just getting getting yeah. out there to reading some is, stuff. Oh, he's waving his hand. But is he waving his hand because he lives in Boston, or is he waving his hand because he's wave he's raised his hand? I just who's look, that? Oh, is I'm it, waving my hand because I'm in Boston. Boston, Sister, Boston? Sister, John, Sister Johnson. I'm also a Johnson. Which oh no, it's a relative. You know. <laughs> so we, we can do something <laughs> that's together. That's, I'm a, that's a writing club right there. I mean, that's, that's a writing what I'm club. Talking about. That's that's good. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah. mean that very seriously, uh, RJ. You know. Okay. We we uh, six o'clock. Lord have mercy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let let me just have a, a second to. I'm on my phone, so this yeah. always takes longer. Yeah. Um, Could you put, put your some, in the chat? Some, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Great. So this yeah. Is Rebecca. And anybody uh, else? I mean, you you're you're thinking of in person, Rebecca? Uh, no, I'm fine on Zoom. In person is great. I anybody, um, writers group. Get yeah, get everybody's info, and then you can you know create a, or you can actually read from your work because we don't do that here. But you know, right? It's, yeah, it's in a in a writers group, definitely. And then um, let me see if I can copy this. Um, well, Brother Johnson, <laughs> I think I have copied your, oh, I think it's done. Okay. So okay. everybody got that information. It was in the chat. Great. Very good. Yay. Awesome. We have right. another email in the chat. I'll save them all as well. Um, Thanks, cool. Well, Thank make sure perfect. someone else has them. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. Have a wonderful week. Yeah. Are we going to be back on the, uh, what are our dates? We don't know. So we need to talk about future dates, but they will be online very soon. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye.